Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Crit Hit Reviews with your host, Arlian. During this episode, we're going to be diving into Sukaban Games' Valhalla, a unique mashup of a bartending simulator and a cyberpunk visual novel. But is the experience akin to a fluffy dream, or will it leave you feeling like you've been gut-punched? Really, I'd have better tend to my puns, just so no one bars me from making them. So, first off, you're not going to be dealing with a controller in Valhalla, it's a mouse and keyboard only type affair, and honestly one that only really needs the mouse. The reason for this is that the gameplay is fairly simple, falling in line with needing to click to advance the story, albeit with a key game mechanic added to the mix in a brilliant manner. Simply put, you're placed in the shoes of a bartender named Jill, which means that instead of advancing the story via dialogue trees, as per visual novel norms, you instead do so by serving drinks to your clients. Mechanics-wise, it's a lot more intuitive than I thought it would be, in part due to the game starting with a nice and quick tutorial that's also entirely optional. It also helps that the interface lets you keep track of what ingredients you've added, the amount therein, as well as whether you've set a drink to be iced, aged, or blended. Though perhaps the most useful bit of the UI for me was the recipe book, which contains almost all the recipes at your disposal so you don't need to memorize everything. Because my memory is like a freaking sieve. Though, it doesn't necessarily hurt to remember what your clients like, and not just for story purposes, given that you also earn a commission of the drinks you make, including a daily bonus for not screwing up anyone's orders, and you're going to need to earn a fair bit of money, given that you've got bills to pay. The other reason is that Jill also occasionally wants something from the store, and failing to buy said item means she'll end up distracted the next day. While she normally has a little bit of internal dialogue that hints about what she needs to be making next, fail to get her what she needs or to have a bill paid in time, and she'll probably be less concerned with the big beer that was just ordered and instead fuss over the lack of hydro in her apartment. And you should feel bad. It's not just being a sloppy bartender that can bankrupt you, however, since there's also some pointless but fun shopping you can do for a variety of unlockables, such as cosmetics for a room, some music, and even a bonus game. No, seriously, there's an entirely adorable game inside a game you get access to once you buy a console and its cartridge from the store that lets you play a side-scrolling shooter. Whilst bite-sized model warrior Julianne doesn't warrant a review on its own, it is definitely a neat easter egg. Problematically, for a story-related game, and especially one as word-dense as Valhalla, you can't actually save freely instead of being offered the opportunity before you head to work every day and in the middle of your shift. While I never found this too inconvenient, for those intending on save scumming a lot either because you screwed up an order or because you need to hear every single bit of dialogue, you have your work cut out for you. And there is a fair amount of reason to save scum, not just for the financial reasons, but also just for how to progress the storyline. See, there's dialogue permutations and different events that occur based on whether you served them what they asked for, if you just served them something else, be it out of malice or because you think they might prefer that drink instead. Or just because you forgot what drink they liked. That, yeah. If you fed them way too much alcohol, because man, there is optional alcohol in a lot of these drinks. Or alcohol supplement, hello Karmatine. In fact, Though the decisions of whether you can get the good or bad ending is primarily tied to your finances, a number of additional endings can be unlocked all based on the type of drinks you serve. And that's just the main game, since there's also a pair of side stories that players can dabble into if they click the innocuous looking plus sign on the menu screen. One is a prologue, which contains the infamous dog incident, which is referred to in the main game, and has you serving a veritable infestation of corgis. Gameplay here is a lot simpler since you don't have to worry about money, so it's more or less just an extra chunk of story. On the other hand, the Anna side story is a bit different, as it's split into two parts which both focus on a particularly enigmatic character. The first part showcases a single day before the events of the main game or the dog show happen, akin to a demo whilst the second part serves as an epilogue to the story as a whole, and plays purely like a visual novel with selectable dialogue choices, 
albeit with an Easter egg at its heart for those who are persistent. So whilst I can certainly provide a relatively simplistic summary of the game, such as Jill, a somewhat impoverished bartender in the dystopian glitch city, endeavors to make ends meet and avoid getting evicted, while navigating everyday life in a bit of drama from her past, that only really manages to cover a very narrow slice of Valhalla's overall narrative. That's because of all the various clients of the bar that have their own particular stories and backgrounds, the likes of which you might find out different aspects as you replay the game and serve them different drinks or get them more hammered. Stories which you can alter the outcome of if you do the right thing at the right time, which are generally quite optional. Still, there's more to be said for why I found Valhalla's storyline so nuanced and engrossing, and a large part of that is the city itself and how well the cyberpunk themes are handled in the overall storyline. Whilst the central storyline focuses on Jill, we get to find out a lot about the city at large, bits of its history, and the turbulent events which are occurring, albeit as bystanders rather than central figures. Instead of being the primary movers for the story, we learn things on the sidelines through word of mouth, news reports, and antidotes. I got to see how events impacting the city influenced people close to Jill and noticed hints of something larger at work that might even be closer to home than it might seem at first glance, but it never took over the narrative. In essence, it manages to capture what it would be like to live in a city dominated by corruption, corporations, and rampant consumerism, with people fighting back against it, fleshing out that world so much that I found myself wanting to know so much more. It also manages to handle a number of mature themes with more deafness and grace than you might expect, considering it handles topics like prostitution, sexuality, interpersonal relationships, grief, gender identity, and other topics throughout the storyline, and never really in a way that feels horribly ham-fisted. Whilst they all exist as topics within the framework of Valhalla, I never felt like it was doing the equivalent of slapping me in the face with a trout and moralizing at me. Graphically, Valhalla is a gorgeous bit of sprite work, and I mean sure, you can toggle scan lines to mess with that and make it more retro, but overall it has a really clean presentation. Whether it's from the simple but pleasing aesthetics of the bar and the occasional weirdness on the TV, to the more complex character portraits and the wide array of expressions they depict, there's a lot to like here if you're a fan of sprite work. Also, Model Warrior Julianne, totally cute little game graphically too. So the thing about Valhalla's audio is that it's basically spot on. Whilst I'm guilty of really liking Electronica, another big reason is that the soundtrack is entirely customizable as at the start and midpoint of every day, you're given the option to tinker with the jukebox, allowing you to choose which songs you want to play in what order. It's honestly a really fun situation since it lets you set a certain vibe while you play and read, to experiment with new tunes as you unlock them, or to even just set a static playlist and all the tracks were just so flippin' satisfying. Anyways, on to my final thoughts, and I have to say I really like this game. Despite the fact that I own it and could Steam share it with my fiance, it was still good enough that I bought her a copy for Christmas. There's just so much there to enjoy with its likable cast, nobody expects Dorinth the Quishin, and just rich, complex storylines. Sure, the main narrative is somewhat straightforward in regards to the protagonist's life, but there's so much to discover about everyone else and the world at large, and it's one of those games where I finished it and couldn't help but hope it was laying the foundation for another game, as whilst it solidly wrapped up Jill's arc, it had managed to make me curious about the city and other characters. Really, I don't genuinely dabble in the domain of visual novels. I was in fact gifted this game by a friend. But this game was a thoroughly appreciated dalliance with a different genre and an altogether solid critical hit. Seriously, if you're not adverse to narrative-heavy games, I would genuinely recommend giving this a look. And with that done, for those that stuck it out to the end, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. The bell button lets you know when we do more. And if you like nerdy communities, you can click the link to our Discord server and meet other indie interested gamers, as well as just the team.